How's it going everybody? Welcome back. Today what we're going to be talking about is how I installed this Frigidaire AC unit. Um, this only covers 150 square feet. The playhouse is 64 square feet. Plenty of area, plenty of room for this thing to cover. Um, this is a window AC unit, but I'm going to show you how I installed it into the wall. So this AC unit is right around 16 inches to 12 inches, 16 inches wide, 12 inches high. I needed to find a place where it was going to fit between my studs uh, without having to uh, pretty much take any studs out. Um, right here in this area, I could tell by my corner and my nails that I'm going to have plenty of room. So the very first step I took, uh, other than finding out exactly where I want to put this AC unit at, is to take it out of the box and figure out what we have inside the box. So we have the AC unit, a user's manual, a bracket that we'll be using, but not the sidings as you can see up on the top left. Uh, we will not be using that. That is only if you're installing it into a window. All right, so we're going to be installing the first part, which is the bracket. Uh, there's four screws that go with this bracket, and it connects onto the top portion of the AC unit itself. There's four holes, four screws. They all go into there. So just make sure that you do install this because this is what's going to connect to your actual frame. If we were to be connecting this into a window or installing it into a window, we would be using these sidings. And I just want to show you what it's like to install these sidings in case you are placing this into a window. All you would have to do is extend it beyond the frame, those sidings, and then it goes into the slots on the side of the AC unit. We are not going to be using these sidings just based on the fact that I'm going to be putting trim around the AC unit once it's installed. And then this top bracket on top of the AC unit has a little hole in there to where you're going to be actually connecting a screw into it. That would connect to your window. So again, we are only using the top bracket for this portion to this project itself. We are not using these sidings. Um, so I will be taking these sidings off. So when I measured this AC unit, it came out to 16 inches by 12 inches. Now, there was a problem I had during this project and I'm going to explain that once that time comes. However, for the meantime, I wanted to go ahead and make a frame that was 16 inches by 12 inches. I'm going to show you how I did that. It's very simple to do and that's what's actually going to hold this AC unit within the wall. And all I needed for the frame was one 2x4. Okay, so my main goal is to get the inside of this frame 16 by 12, 16 inches by 12 inches. My top and bottom pieces are going to be cut at 16 inches, just using a tape measure and a um, speed square, and we're going to make our markings at 16 inches, and we're going to cut those. You can use a circular saw, a worm drive, or a miter saw, whatever you can to cut this piece of wood at 16 inches. Now, you have to remember that we are trying to make 16 by 12 on the inside, not the total frame on the outside. So within the inside, you need to take into consideration that these 2 by 4s are actually an inch and a half. You need to add those 2 inches and a half together to make 3 inches. The height, the pieces on the side of your frame should be 15 inches, not 12 inches. That's what's going to give you 16 by 12 on the inside. After I cut my 16 inch pieces and my two 15 inch pieces, I went ahead and connected them together with some deck screws. Again, 16 by 12 in the inside of the frame is only because of the fact that I have an AC unit at that size. Go by whatever size of AC unit that you purchase. And by looking at this frame, you can understand why I had to make 15 inches on the sides because of the half inch on top and half inch on bottom. When you put those on the side, you're going to have 12 inches from the top to the bottom inside the frame. Alright, so remember that issue I was talking about in the beginning of the video? Well, this is it. I want to make sure that I cover this so that you guys have an understanding of what not to do when you have to come down to this point. So this frame would fit perfectly around the AC unit if there weren't those portions of plastic or metal that's popping out of the back side of this AC unit. Little quarter inch thick pieces of metal that are popping out from the sides. The top portion and the sides, right where my left hand is at. I did not realize this. I did not pay any attention to that when I made the frame or when I made the measurements. I need to readjust this frame at only a quarter of an inch on the 16 inches. So 16 inches and a quarter inch is what I need to make. Okay, so once I made my adjustment and added that quarter of an inch to the 16 inches, so now I'm at 16 and a quarter inch on the frame for the top plate and the bottom plate. 
um, I went ahead and tested it again on the AC unit. You want to make sure that you're testing your frame on the AC unit before you install it into the wall. You don't want to have to make any corrections once this frame is installed. So as you can see here, it's gliding smoothly over the AC unit. It's a nice tight fit still. Um, even though that quarter of an inch, I don't like the fact that it's a little bit looser than what it needs to be. But I couldn't do anything about that in order to get this frame over that. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the frame from the AC unit itself. And this frame is now going to be my template against the wall. I'm going to make my markings around this frame onto the wall and I know how much drywall I need to cut out in order for this frame to fit. Alright, so I use a stud finder to find my studs behind the wall. I highly recommend in getting one of these if you're going to do this type of project. Even if you built this yourself, there may be fillers within the wall that you just completely forgot about. Regardless, you want to make sure that you know exactly where your studs are at. Measure between the studs and make sure that you're going to have enough room for that, that frame to fit. If it's not going to fit there, you're either going to have to make some adjustments to those studs or find another place on the wall. Once you find your studs from whichever marking you made, go ahead and use a level and make a straight line. This is going to be the first line you're going to be working off with that frame. The top of your frame is now going to go underneath that line that you just made with the level. And now you can use your frame as a template to draw around it and make sure that you have all your markings on your wall because that's what we're going to be cutting out. Now it may not go perfect the first time when you make this drawing. However, you have an idea of what to do. So what I did here was I went ahead and punched a hole right in the corner of where my frame was at. I realized that I hit a stud right there so I must have hit the middle of the stud with my stud finder. So I went a little bit further to the right of it and I went ahead and found where that stud was at by going with an angle at an angle with a screwdriver. Once I found the side of my stud, basically where that stud ends, I knew that I could no longer go any further to the left of that. So that's going to be where my frame, the left side of my frame is going to begin. So what I used here was a drywall knife. This is a lot easier than using just a regular utility knife or a razor blade or box cutter, whatever you want to call it. A drywall knife, they're not expensive and it makes the project or the process go by so much faster. Now keep in mind, the very first measurement I made on this wall, the very first marking with the template, hit a stud. So because of that, I needed to readjust my measurements and I re needed to readjust my markings on the wall. It's very simple to do. Same exact process as before. You're going to be using your, your frame as the template. You're going to be using a level to make sure that everything is squared and leveled off. Just go ahead and take that drywall out once you have it cut out. Use a utility knife to take the insulation out. It's very easy to cut. Just go ahead and keep making your cuts on the insulation until it does remove itself from the wall. If the frame does not fit at this point, just make any small adjustments. The most likely the drywall is what's stopping that frame from going in at this point. Just make small adjustments, try the frame again, and it should fit. I then went ahead and installed some deck screws into the frame connecting into the stud behind the wall. Now, I used about four to five screws on each side of this frame just to make sure it has a secure hold. If you were using anything heavier, we would have to use some lag bolts or you would have to readjust to make some cripple studs and some headers. But for the size and weight of this actual frame itself or the AC unit, I'm not going to need any more than some deck screws to hold this thing in. Alright, so now that I have access to that back panel, the exterior wall of the shed, I'm going to go ahead and use a spade bit and a drill to punch out the corners of where the frame is at. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to use a reciprocating saw to make my cuts. So this is a reciprocating saw here. This is a DeWalt one that I purchased. Um, you can see that it cuts with ease. I love this product, this tool right here. It works great for multiple things, whether or not it be cutting trees, uh, twigs, getting through some PVC piping, getting through studs, knocking things down, or making cuts like this. It's a great tool to have. I love the fact that I own one and it 
makes a huge difference when doing projects like this. But as you can see, now you know why I made those holes in the corners with the spade bit so that the blade of this reciprocating saw can actually fit and then make my cuts. Once you have the panel cut out, go ahead and make whatever adjustments that you need to make in order for that AC to fit in perfectly. The panel that's on the back side of the structure, basically surrounding the structure, is called T111. You want to make sure that the T111 is not going to stop this AC from flowing through the frame to the back side and you just want to make sure that you make whatever adjustments you can at this point. Whether or not it be with the reciprocating saw or use a sander or a utility knife. You can use a utility knife to cut the T111 also. It does cut with that. So make whatever adjustments it is that you need to make in order for that AC unit to fit. And just a small tip, in case it's not going in from the front side, go to the back side, give it a little bit of adjustment, move it up and down and pull it and see if that fixes the problem. And then you're going to drive one screw into the slot where the bracket's at. That's going to connect to your frame. I just used a deck screw. I then used caulking for all the seams. I wanted to make sure that nothing from the outside is going to be able to come on the inside. It doesn't matter if you use white or clear. Um, it's going to be covered up by the trim anyways once we're done with this. So just keep in mind, the caulking that I'm putting on the inside portion is... Basically, just to make sure that there's no bugs that are going to come in. I'm not concerned about the water because really sealing it up should occur on the outside when you're concerned about water. However, I just want to make sure that those little tiny ants or anything is not going to be able to seep through those cracks and get into the inside. I then turned the AC on, made sure that it worked. Um, it does, and it blows nicely. I'm going to let you listen to what it sounds like and how quiet it really is. All right, so I came out to the back side. I want to make sure that I'm going to cover up all these seams. I'm going to make sure that nothing gets into those cracks that I made initially with the reciprocating saw. Um, I want to make sure that everything is filled up so that no water gets into there and no bugs get into there. Um, they will not pass the silicone or the caulking that I put on the, on the inside. However, I don't want them in the wall, so I want to make sure this is completely sealed up. Before I got started on the back side, I wanted to make sure that I finished the front side first. All I'm using right here is some 1x4s. You can use whatever trim you want. Just make sure that it's wide enough to fit over the framing and make sure that it looks like it's flush with the wall. I could have easily used a brad nailer on this. Um, I'm just using some panel nails and a hammer. Um, it's very easy to use these nails and it would have been a lot of uh, work to bring out the compressor and the brad nailers just for a couple nails. So here I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this cord. I don't want it exposed. I definitely don't want the kids tripping on it. Um, and it is a long cord. Um, I'm going to get creative with this. I'm going to think of ideas as I'm going along with this project. And I'm going to have something at the end that's going to work. So you really want to make sure that everything is leveled. The trim's going to be leveled off. The AC unit's going to be leveled off. And all that is leveled off just based on the fact that when we first started making our markings with the level against the wall, we knew that that was going to be leveled. As long as you cut that on the line or somewhat close to it, your frame should be leveled. That's why it's very important to use a level in the beginning when you're making your lines and your markings around your frame. All right, so getting to the back side, there's a lot of things we could have done with this. We could have put caulking around all the edges, um, all the seams to make sure that nothing gets in there. All I used here was some window flashing. I made sure that I cut the window flashing in half and kind of made a seam right in the middle of it to go over against the wall and the AC unit itself. It's going to work. It's going to keep everything out. So I did want to go over how I made this trim. Now there's so many different types of trim out there, um, but again, all I used was a 1x4 just to get something up there to cover all the seams. The way that I did this was I made sure that I went to my corners of the AC unit. If you hit your corners and you make a marking right where the corner is at on your wood, you use a miter saw to make a 45 degree cut. Just make sure you're angling the blade to whichever way the cut has to be made. It's not hard to do, and as long as you hit those corners of the AC unit, you're going to be lined up. 
It's a very simple process and you'll learn how to do molding and trim work by just doing that. Hit the corners. So as you can see here, I did the same exact process as the inside for the outside. I used 1x4s and I painted them prior to installing them on. I had some leftover paint from all the trim work that I did around this playhouse. And as you can see, the brown matches everything. It doesn't really matter what color you decide to do. I mean, if you decide to go off with an off color, then that's what you're going to do. It doesn't matter. As long as you're able to hit those miter cuts on the corners of the AC unit, your trim work will come out nice. Okay, so now everything is installed and sealed off, and I know that I can leave this AC unit like this if I wanted to. However, looking at that cord, I'm not satisfied with it. Doing all this work to this playhouse and this AC unit, just having an eyesore with that cord, I'm going to have to get creative. So I started thinking of something to do, and I'm going to show you exactly what I did. All right, so my thought was putting this cord behind the wall so that nobody can trip on it nobody can see it i've never done something like this before but i'm going to give it a shot i'm actually going to put an outlet behind the wall with an access panel all right so based on the size of the head of the plug it's not going to fit through a normal you know plastic covering of any sort you actually have to make something and close it in because i don't want a big hole in the wall so i'm using a speed square going around the angles and i'm going to cut this with a drywall knife all right, so getting started on the hole, um, you don't want to make anything too big just based on the fact that you are going to have to cover this up. Anything that's oversized, I mean, you're going to have a big piece of trim that's covering over this. The way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to put some trim around the actual cord, and I'm going to close that hole in, and the cord is just going to be placed within the trim. Um, however, the size of the hole needs to be big enough for that head of the cord to move around. So this is the access panel that I purchased. It's a 6 inch by 9 inch. Uh, you can see that it's plenty of space, enough for me to be able to put my hands and arms into the wall and work around the outlet and the wires. I think it was like $11 in some sense at Lowe's. Alright, so getting started with this access panel, I went ahead and popped out the inside. And I'm using a level to make sure that this thing is leveled off. If it's not leveled off, you're going to have a crooked access panel. So you can mark the inside and the outside just so you have your lines so you know exactly where this thing needs to go. Cut out the outside lines, make sure it's as close as possible. You want this thing to be snug when put in. Alright, so I used the same method as before with my drywall knife. I went ahead and followed the lines with the knife and I cut out the hole. You can see that it's a pretty snug fit. So one of the things I wanted to mention before is be careful with that wire when you're using the drywall knife. Just be very cognizant of the fact that there's wire behind that wall. And I just followed the same line as the outlet. What I'm going to use right here is a one gang box to put this outlet in. After knocking out the knockouts of the box, I went ahead and cut the wire. I didn't want to cut the wire right in the middle. I wanted to make sure I gave myself enough space and wiring on the left side as I'm going to connect an additional um, strand of wire to the right side. All right, so after I cut those wires, I went ahead and put the first strand, the left side, into the box. And the box is actually within the wall right now. You can't see it, but I'm going to show you a better view of it in a bit, a better angle. Um, but as you can see, I need to add more wire to that right side because it's just too short right now to be able to reach over to the outlet. So I need to put all the blacks together, the whites together, and the coppers together. Basically, your black is your hot. Your whites are neutral and your copper is your ground wire. So I needed a junction box. What a junction box is, is when you're connecting wires together, you want to make sure that they are within some sort of um, containment. And I'm using an LB here to make that connection within. The only reason I'm using this is because I had a line around and it's going to work just like a junction box. So my next step is actually attaching the box to the stud. There's some indentions within the box that allow a screw to go into, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm hitting the indention portion within that box with a screw and driving it into the stud. I just needed to make sure my wires were in the box already, and I needed to be careful when driving that screw with wires around. Even though that insulation should cause no hazard uh, around that box, I'm still going to be cutting some out just around the box area just to avoid any possibilities. So getting started on the outlet, I wanted to make sure that 
when installing my black is to brass and my whites to the silver I'm going to continue the same run as before when I install the electrical and that is from my power supply is actually hitting the top of the outlet and the power that's coming off that outlet is running off the bottom of my outlet to the next outlet and as you can see for the ground wire I went ahead and wrapped one wire with a little extension off on the bottom of that outlet the green nut and all I'm going to do is now attach or tie in the ground wire to that extension. So I want to make sure that the wire that I'm going to be connecting to the bottom of the outlet has enough wire to be able to install with, be able to play around with basically. Um, you don't want it too short to where you're having to pull the wire or push the outlet to get it to reach. You want enough, just enough to be able to attach it with ease. You can see that I left the ground wire just a little bit longer um, instead of cutting it exactly where the other ones were cut, the black and the white, just so I know that I had enough to tie in to the ground wire and then I can cut it after that. One step that I failed to mention and is probably the most crucial step is make sure that your power is off when working with this. Um, at the time that you even start this entire project, you should have your power cut so that you're not going to risk hitting any hot wires and it's just a lot easier to make sure that your breaker is off when doing this. Turn it off, make sure you're using some sort of you know, device to whether or not to check to their, if there's power. Um, use a radio, plug one in. If it turns off, most likely your breaker uh, went off and it turned the power off. Just make sure that this power is off before working with any of this. The next step that I took was wrapping the outlet with black tape. I make sure that every time I'm working with wiring of any sort, I always use black tape to give it that extra safety feature. After wrapped, I went ahead and placed it into the outlet box. Somewhat difficult at an angle, it's a li little bit different than when you're actually installing it, you know, face forward. Um, but just make sure you get all those wires into that box and once you have all those wires set in, go ahead and screw that uh, outlet into that box and it's almost ready to go. As you can see here, I'm using a small screwdriver. Can't really use a big screwdriver when dealing with a space this small, so have yourself a small screwdriver, it works a lot easier. And I'm gonna remove some of that insulation around the outlet as said before. All I'm doing here is just putting the plate over the outlet to give it that extra safety feature and basically it looks nice. Um, even though it's never really gonna be seen, might as well complete it all. Um, as you can see here, once this plate is done, we're going to go turn the breaker on, we're going to try it out, and you're going to see that there's power. And we have just installed a hidden outlet, one that will never be seen from the outside and can only be seen if you remove that access panel. The next step that I took was feeding the power cord into the hole that I initially made um, and feeding it down against the back side of the wall against the insulation and pulling it through the hole, the second hole that we made where the access panel is going to go. So this was kind of difficult to do with just one hand as I'm holding the camera in the other, but I managed to get it done. And as you can see here, the power cord is now plugged into the outlet that's behind the wall. I'm going to go ahead and install the bracket portion of the access panel back in. And we're going to go ahead and try this out to make sure that everything works. Um, as soon as I put the, the door back on. So again, this is a hidden outlet. The power cord is in and we're going to replace the door and we're going to give this a shot right now to make sure that it actually works. So keep in mind that this access panel here, you can leave it how it is. It's a nice white color. Um, you could paint it. You could put some sort of uh, wallpaper or whatever you have against your wall already. You can cover this thing up and make it blend in with the wall. All right, try to turn a blind eye to all the debris on the ground. However, this is the access panel installed. Um, as you can see before, when I moved it around, it uh, did come out of the wall just a slight bit. Now this thing is snug, but there was nothing else to anchor it against the wall with. So what I'm gonna have to do is use some wood glue around the edges, wood glue, ax, like nails or is known to be even stronger than nails or screws when installed or used. 
All right, so I went ahead and turned the breaker back on, and as you can see, the outlets are now back on. Um, this power cord right here being plugged in is going to be a continuous power, even though the AC is off. Once I switch it to on, it's still going to be a continuous power, but you're going to be able to see that the AC is working. Um, just because of the fact that I took the actual audio out of these clips, I'm going to have to show you that the AC is working. And what I'm going to do is just get a piece of plastic and put it against the AC, and you're going to see that it's going to move and blow towards me. So I just pretty much looked around the ground for any piece of plastic, and I came across the faceplate for the outlet. And as you can see, I'm putting it against the vents, and it is blowing. Now, it only blows out of the top portion, and it does blow cool and very strong. So as you can see, the paper is moving towards me, showing that the power is actually working on it. The next step that I need to take is closing the first hole that I made. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy with the trim work around this. I'm just going to do something in order to cover up that hole and to have that wire or the cord still looking like it's going into something basically. So I'm just getting some measurements here and I'm just going to come up with something real quick. So I'm just going to cut a piece of one by here. Um, usually I use my miter saw to make this cut, but I need my table saw anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and use my table saw to make my length. Um, after I have my length, what I'm going to do is get the middle portion of the piece that I just cut and I'm going to use a spade bit, a spade bit that's wide enough that the cord is going to be able to move freely up and down within a couple centimeters, um, however small enough that it's not going to expose too big of a hole. So I'm just going to use about a 7 eighths a bit here in order for this to work. Um, once I have that in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and use my drill with the spade bit and go ahead and drill the hole down. Once I have that drilled down, I'm going to go ahead and cut this board right in the middle so that it looks like one solid piece once it's put back together. I'm just taking my time when drilling this hole out. I'm letting the bit do all the work. All right, so once I find my middle mark, basically 1.75 or 1 and 3 quarters of an inch, as even though these are 1 by 4s, they're really 3 and a half inches. Um, so you want to make sure you get your middle mark and then cut it right down the middle. All right, so here's my idea that I made, um, that I came up with. Basically, the cord is going to look like it's going into a hole. Um, if the head of the cord was not so big, then I wouldn't have to do this, but unfortunately I did, and this is the idea that I came up with. All right, so when installing this piece right here, I wanna make sure that it's leveled first off. Um, you can use a brad nailer if you want. If you have a compressor and a gun, I just didn't feel like bringing the whole thing out. So I'm just using some panel nails and, some ha and a hammer, and I'm just gonna go ahead and use the panel nails to install these pieces. So as mentioned before, I'm gonna go ahead and use some wood glue for around the uh, access panel, the back side that's going to connect to the wall. Uh, just keep in mind that it may seep out. I plan on painting this thing anyway, so once the glue dries, if any seeps out, I'm just going to clean it up and paint over the wall. All right, other than the painting portion, the interior part is complete. Um, again, this was all extra stuff that I did um, to include the outlet behind the wall, the trim work. It does not need to be done this way for the AC to work, but I wanted to take those extra steps. After the glue set in and the access panel was stiff inside the wall, um, I went ahead and cleaned up the glue, anything that seeped out, and I went ahead and painted the, the access panel. Um, you can see that's the same exact color as the wall. It doesn't necessarily blend in 100%, but it does give a good blending so that it doesn't stand out as much. Um, unless you're actually looking at it very closely is when you're going to actually notice the access panel. All right, and with the paint fully dried, uh, this is basically what it came out to look like. And it blends in pretty nicely, I think, you know, with the paint over the access panel. But again, you can leave it white if you want. All right, so moving to the back side, I want to get started with some sort of awning over this AC unit just to give it extra protection. It's not required. Um, however, things last longer if you protect it. So that was my idea behind it, and that's what I want to do. All right, so the very first step I took was making a measurement for the top board. It's just going to be a 2 by 4 I'm going to use, and I'm going to give it an extra inch and a half on the side of the trim just so that I have enough for the 2x4 that's going to be angled going up and holding the actual roof portion up um, so that it fits nice and snug. 
All right, as you can see, I'm putting the measurement on my two by four here using a speed square for a line so that I know where my blade's gonna hit. And all I'm using is a miter saw. This time I'm using a miter saw, not the table saw. It makes it a lot easier to cut two by fours with a miter saw. All right, so after cutting the board, I went ahead and painted it and I let it dry some before I started working with it. Um, as you can see, the same, the same exact paint matches all the trim around the actual structure itself. And all I'm using right here are some deck screws just to install this. All right, the way I made my bracing was 45 degree cut on one side that's gonna go against the wall and a 40 degree cut that's gonna connect with the roof so it has a little pitch to it. After making my first cut, a 45 degree on one side and a 40 degree on another side, I went ahead and used that as a template for my second piece. I wanted to make sure it's the exact same size. So I cut a 45 degree on one side, measured the second side and cut that at a 40 degree. I then used my Craig pocket hole system to make two pocket holes in the 45 degree angle cut side. Um, I'm not gonna make the pocket holes on the 40 degree angle. I just wanna make sure that these are gonna be on the 45 degree angle because they are going to connect to the stud that's behind the T111. All right, so as you can see, I'm using a piece of scrap wood here. Um, it's the same exact T111 siding. It's just a piece that was cut out during the AC installation process. So what I'm doing right here is basically just finding where the 45 degree angle cut is going to be flushed with the bottom of that T111 siding that I'm gonna use for the roof portion of this awning. And then all you have to do right here at this point is just go ahead and install those Craig screws into the stud. I'll fill those holes in with pocket plugs in just a bit. Using the scrap piece, I did the same exact with the other side as I did with the first side. I then went ahead and used the pocket hole plugs. The pocket hole plugs is part of the Craig system. It has to be purchased separately. However, they fit the pocket holes that the Craig system makes. All you have to do is use some wood glue and put those things in, let them settle, and we'll paint them later. The same idea applies for the other portion, the 45 degree angle cut where we made the pocket holes on the left side. Just go ahead and fill those in with the pocket hole plugs. It was a little difficult working around this camera, but we managed to get it through. I apologize about the camera angle at this point. I wish that I knew it was higher than this, but uh, what I'm trying to do here is get an inch overhang on the sides as well as from the back to the front. So here's a piece of uh, scrap of T111 that I had left over from when I was building the structure. Um, I want to go ahead and make sure that I'm cutting an even side on one of the sides. These things have underlayment and overlayment. I just want to make sure that's completely flat on each side. All right, so I went ahead and made my measurement after I made my first cut to make sure that that side of the T111 is completely straight and flat on the bottom. I believe my measurements came out to somewhere around 28 and a half inches by 16 and a quarter. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I was making those measurements on the T111. I was going to cut them using the Craig rip cut. This is actually a pretty easy device to use when using your circular saw. I've never tried it with my worm drive. It may work. I've never tried to connect it. I don't see why it wouldn't, but I've never tried connecting it with my worm drive. I do know that it works with a circular saw, so that's what I use it on. Um, it keeps a straight line for you. It's using a guide on the left side of your T111 or your plywood, whatever you're cutting. After making my measurement for the 16 and a quarter, I went ahead and used the Craig rip cut again and made my cut. At this point, the pocket holes have dried with the wood glue, and I went ahead and just touched up any areas that needed to get touched up to include those pocket holes. After painting the roofing portion and letting it dry, I went ahead and placed it on top. You can see that there's a one inch overhang all the way around it. That way I could put some wood on the bottom and make it look a little thicker. Alright, so I installed this roofing portion with just some panel nails. They were brown panel nails. You really can't see them unless you're up on top. Um, however, they installed perfectly. I don't need to use an over amount of panel nails. You can see right here that I had to make a little cut around the trim. I just used my jigsaw after making some measurements to make that cut. I still need to put caulking on the edge portion where it meets up with the wall. All right, so I decided to use white caulking for this portion. The only reason being it's a lot cheaper than the clear. I know that I'm gonna be covering this up anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and use just white. It doesn't matter what color I'm using. I just wanna make sure that the rain doesn't get behind this. If you are not planning on covering this up, I would recommend going with clear. 
All right, so in order to get this trim portion on the bottom, I needed to figure out the angle cut and the degree cut on this portion that's going to go against the wall. I figured it to be 10 degrees. Once I had that flushed against the wall, I went ahead and found the corner of the roof and marked the top of the trim to make my 45 degree cut. So in order for me to make my miter cut, I just needed to put my piece of wood or the trim against the fence of the miter saw and make sure that I cut on the outside of my measurement. So one thing I like to do when dealing with trim is before I actually install it with some panel nails or some brad nails, I want to make sure that it's going to look good before I install it or even paint it. So I'm using some clamps here just to place the first piece under the bottom portion of the roof, made my miter cut on the second piece, and made sure that it fit together. So I went ahead and made my second cut, basically the front portion. You can see that there's a gap between the miter joints. Once those get nailed together, they're going to be pulled together and they're going to be very tight. So when installing these pieces, I went ahead and used my brad nailer, basically my 18 gauge nail gun. Um, it has to have a compressor when using this. They do sell some that are battery operated, but I do not have one of those. Um, but using brad nails and a nail gun when installing this is a lot easier than hammering panel nails because you have to hold this up at the same time. Now as mentioned before, this is not necessary, you don't have to do this, however I did want to cover up the caulking and I had extra wood lying around. So I went ahead and painted another piece of trim and just used my nail gun to install it. Alright, so this is the final outcome of the little awning portion I had made to cover up the AC. Just to give it the extra protection, make sure that the rain and the sun doesn't hit it as much as if it wasn't protected. It's a very simple project to do. All it takes is some time, some measurements, and some cuts. Alright guys, thanks for joining, and we'll see you guys on the next one.